Hello and welcome to this special episode of Keep It Clean. Over the past couple of years since I've started this channel, I've received many questions from people wanting to know more about litter picking. How to start, what equipment to use, how dangerous it is, how to dispose of rubbish bags, and so on. Well, if you've ever wondered how to litter pick, here I am to answer some of the questions I've been asked. Hopefully by the end of the video, you're gonna feel an urge to go out and clean up your street right away. So without further ado, let's get down to business. Is litter picking legal? Multiple people have stopped me on the street to ask me this question, and the answer is yes, absolutely. There is no law prohibiting anyone from cleaning up the public domain, not over here in the UK, not anywhere else in the world for all I know. The only way by which you could get in trouble, though it's a slim chance, is by trespassing on private property. Sometimes it's obvious what's off limits, sometimes less so, but as a general rule, always ask for permission if you think you should. Use your common sense and you should be fine. What do I need to get started? Just three things. Willingness, plastic bag, and a pair of protective gloves. That's it. If you have those, you can walk out your door right now like a complete boss and start cleaning up. That's how most people start. That's how I started. Watch the first video I posted on this channel. There's a link in the description. What should I do with all the rubbish? This is slightly more complicated than it may first seem, as I shall explain. First, you might be lucky to live in a place where local authorities are prepared to support you. I, for instance, live in the London Borough of Harrow, and all I have to do here is leave the bags in a place where the local council's waste disposal team can collect them from. Usually it's next to a public bin. When finding larger items, I photograph and report them to the council as a flight tip. This is the paradigm that most, if not all, London boroughs follow. There are some differences between them. For instance, some of them use a dedicated app called Love Clean Streets, but the general process is quite similar. One other thing worth mentioning is that some boroughs will give volunteers free equipment for litter picking, of particular importance being branded plastic bags. They're used to make a distinction between bags picked by volunteers versus bags that have been fly tipped. So I definitely recommend contacting your local council and asking what help they can provide. Naturally, there's another possibility, namely that you live in a place where the public administration is not prepared in any way to help volunteers. How about new? That's a big problem. What to do then? Well, I can't really tell you what to do, but I can't tell you what I'd do. What I'd do would be to completely ignore such ill-advised warnings and to do it anyway, while at the same time trying to convince those in charge that anything short of supporting and encouraging volunteers is wrong, and if they're not prepared, they better get prepared. In other words, I won't let bureaucracy and unpreparedness of those who should be prepared get in my way, but that's just what I'd do. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. How can I recycle the rubbish I collect? The first step is obviously to separate out the recyclables as you go. Handling two bags is a little difficult if you solo pick, but certainly doable. Then the complicated part. Where should you take all this stuff? I wonder. If you live in Germany, Denmark, Norway, or another country where the buzz return scheme exists, you've hit jackpot. Bottles and cans are prime examples of commonly accepted items. You'd just take the items to a return vending machine, and you'd get paid for it. And those of you who live in such countries, let me know in the comments how well the system works where you live. Then for all the recyclables that you can't easily return, and in the UK there will be all of them, you can do one of three things. One, check with your local authorities and see if it makes sense for you to leave bags of separated rubbish for them to collect. If yes, you're set. Do that. Two, take the recyclables home with you and put them in your own recycling bin. This might be a bit inconvenient, but if you have some spare space, then you might want to do that. 3. Take the recyclables home with you and when you've collected enough of them, take them to a recycling center or any other place that accepts them. And that's about it. Those are pretty much all your reasonable options to recycle the litter you pick. Apart from, of course, adopting some of the items and using them yourself. What equipment should I get? This is a long one and I'm gonna do this in descending order of importance. Gloves. This is the most important thing in your arsenal, because it's the one thing you can't litter pick without. Everything else is optional by comparison. It's very important to get good gloves. In the first episode I ever filmed for this channel, I used thin, see-through gloves, the kind of which medical personnel might use. Major mistake. They basically offer no protection from anything but some liquids. Don't repeat that mistake. I certainly didn't, because halfway through that video, I had already switched to proper gloves. What I use now is latex coated gloves. They offer a decent level of protection and they're cheap. Do read the specs of whatever you think of buying. Check things like cut and puncture resistance as you want as much protection as possible. However, no matter how good the gloves are, don't expect to just put them on and not be careful. No glove offers complete protection so don't do reckless things. Litter picker. 
Okay, hear me out. This is where you will bleed money if you keep buying the wrong thing. And that thing is a cable-driven litter picker. You do not want it. They're all terrible and they're all built in such a way that they inevitably break before you even get a chance to get emotionally attached to them. I broke four different ones in under one year until I realized that no matter which one I got next, it would have had the same fate as the previous ones. And for that reason, I'm going to say I'm out. So I switched to a different breed, tongs. They don't have the breaking cable problem, and as such, they last a lot longer. The only problem that this kind of litter picker has is that its rubber ends can become loose with time, and you'll need to either re-glue them or replace them if you lose them. Luckily, finding spares should not be a problem. Bags. I'm lucky to have plastic bags provided by our local council. They're sturdy and dependable, and they're free so that's what I'm using. There's a good chance your local authorities can provide you with rubbish bags for free. Contact them, tell them you're a volunteer, and see if they can help. If they do and they give you bags, then that's what you should use. If they don't, it's not the end of the world, but you'll need to get your own. I fully recommend clear or semi-transparent bags over opaque ones, as it's much easier for anyone, including yourself, to tell what's inside of them. A good size bag is between 60 and 90 liters. What you don't want are bags that are either too small or too large. You also don't want very thin, flimsy bags. You will hate them, trust me. Get something reasonably sturdy. Bag hoop. Easily the most asked about item that I use. Dozens of people have asked me about it, both on the internet as well as on the street. A bag hoop is meant to keep your rubbish bag open. That's it, but it will make your life so much easier. It's an inexpensive item that you can find online and it lasts for years. I still use the first one I bought. Conclusion, get one. Work trousers. Seriously, you don't want to ruin your jeans. Because you will. Especially if you litter pick where there's lots of vegetation or if you need to do a lot of crouching or if you litter pick in bad weather, you will ruin your trousers. Guaranteed. Not only that, but work trousers usually have enough storage space that allow you to carry a lot of things with you. This is what I use. Scruff's work trousers. I've been using the same pair for one and a half years and they've been through a lot. Footwear. Please don't go out litter picking in your slippers. You don't know what hides in the grass, you don't know what hides under that piece of cardboard you casually step on to flatten. Get a sturdy pair of shoes. My suggestion is to buy safety boots. They're not that expensive and they should last you for many years. Head and face protection. This is a bit more subtle, but if, like me, you often find yourself elbowing your way through vegetation to reach elusive beer cans stuck in some shrubs, protect your head and face. I always wear a cap when I go litter picking, always, and it has proven its worth many, many times. Cover your mouth and nose with a mask when you think you should. You don't want anything getting in, and chances are you're gonna encounter some pretty disgusting things. Take no chances. High visibility vest. It's essential to wear one if you litter pick close to busy roads, or in low light conditions. The hidden advantage of wearing a high-vis vest is that most people will think you're just a hired worker doing their job. The hidden disadvantage of wearing a high-vis vest is actually the same as the advantage. You become invisible, and that is not what you might always want. Garden shears. An optional item for sure, but one which is very useful in some situations. I use mine all the time to remove cable ties and to cut annoying vegetation, like brambles. It's a good idea to have one on you. Sharps container. Let me be very clear, do not pick up syringes or needles unless you absolutely must. Check with your local authorities for what they recommend. If you do have to pick them up, never ever put them in your rubbish bag or a bin. Carefully put them in a hard container and take them to a pharmacy to be disposed of. But luckily, those kind of items are not as common as people think they are. They're usually concentrated in specific areas, so you're not likely to just find them spread all over, like beer cans. I don't care a sharps container, for instance, because the number of needles and syringes I find is extremely low. Any other sharp objects, like broken glass, I can usually handle. A makeshift sharps container can be any plastic recipient if you cut it open. I've used this trick many times, and it's worked fine. Brush and dustpan. To be honest, I don't carry brush and dustpan, but every time I find deposits of cigarette butts, I wish I had one on me. I can't litter pick myself, are there other ways in which I can help? Absolutely. Spreading the word is as important as doing field work. Not only does it educate people on the very existence of the problem, that's the core mechanic by which people usually choose to get involved with the cause. They hear about or see other people doing something. So the absolute best way you can help is by talking to your family, talking to your friends, letting them know anyone can do this, regular people like you and I, and who knows, you might actually help someone become a volunteer themselves. So yeah, spreading awareness is the number one thing. I am aware. I am aware. And shameless plug here, but if you want to help me and this channel specifically, like and subscribe. You can also buy me a coffee. There's a link in the description. 
and help me towards my goal of becoming a millionaire and living a life of luxury and excesses. Final thoughts. Litter picking is a great way to improve your local community and it's also something anyone can do. It can be rewarding, it can make for good physical exercise and it's a great way to clear your mind. And though the drive to litter pick usually stems from necessity, it's enthusiasm that initially propels people. The thought that cleaning up a place is going to instantly transform it. And that isn't wrong, it really does transform it. What's not immediately obvious is how fast many of those places return to their former state and the disillusionment that can be experienced because of that. The one challenge every litter picker faces is keeping the belief it's not all in vain. If you're a litter picker and you've never asked yourself if it was worth keeping going, you haven't litter picked nearly enough. The most important piece of advice I can give you is to look for like-minded people. Join a litter picking group or even a local community group and go from there. Create one yourself if you must. Whatever you do, don't isolate yourself and try to be a part of something bigger. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I hope I haven't missed any important questions, but if I did, I'm happy to answer them there. Have a great 2023 and I will see you on the next cleanup video. Thank you.